so I will call this meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda, and I assume there are no requested changes to the agenda, so we'll consider the agenda approved. Um, we have some members of the board uh, appearing remotely, so I would ask, uh, ask you to uh, introduce yourselves. I'm Sarah Carter. Hi, this is Adrian Gill from District 1. <clears throat> Val Alfano, District 2. All right, I think we're good to go now. Um, just to give a little uh, <clears throat> introduction on how things will run, we're, this is part of a, ser a, a long series of abatement hearings that we that this board has been holding, and and we've gotten it down to a way of proceeding that uh, enables us to move through the hearings, uh, the, the requests very efficiently, mostly by asking a set of canned questions that are the things that we need to get get you to go through in order to. Uh, be sure that we're meeting our statutory requirements and it will it may seem kind of impersonal and robotic but that's because we're just trying to efficiently get the information that we need to get for the question for our answers and um, we have a long agenda tonight because we we're not able to meet last week. And so I think we'll we'll get through it all very quickly. And for starters, I will ask everyone who's gonna be testifying tonight, either here in the room or, uh, or remotely to raise your right hand. Um, do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, yes. thank you. Consider that everyone's sworn in, and I will also rule that uh, the the materials that have been submitted in advance are received into evidence for each of these hearings. And uh, and then one other thing uh, I should say is that uh, the rule we have have developed for uh, flood uh, flood damage requests is that we will take the evidence of on all of the cases and then not make a decision on those cases tonight, but make a decision on all those cases uh, at our next meeting, which is next Monday. And the reason for doing that is so that we will uh, be able to uniformly apply the standards to, uh, to all the cases appearing before us. And first person on the agenda is Georgia Goldsboro, 12 North College Street. So why don't you come on up? Is this set up so Tim is where the witness is supposed to sit? Um, it was sort of set up, however, we would use it. Okay. Well, they, yeah, they, they won't be able to be on camera. There we go. Thank, thank you. That, okay, that, that's that's fine. All right, thanks for thanks for coming back. Thank you all. For bearing with me, I had never been to an abatement hearing of any sort before last time, and I realized I was not very prepared. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Um, I did call John at the city. Um, clerk office to find out if it's all right if I bring a lot of supporting documents for um, the income and the expenditures of um, bringing to the uh, barn at 12 North College Street up to where it is today if I could pass them around. I have a, a worksheet here that can go into record if there are any errors. I have a second sheet to to fix the errors. I have 
the amount of taxes I still owe um, for this year. And that's the first page. I have my income documents here. I did bring also my tax return for this year to go with the supporting documents. I also brought a permit that um, was brought up to me that I would have to have one. So I did bring the permit that supported the work that I did have done starting with last August to mid-December this year when I was able to get um, Michelle at the, uh, the uh, office to approve my occupation there. So I brought that permit. Um, I brought my expense sheet just for the fun of it on what I did spend so far on the building and then the, um, the surprise service ticket that came my way that sent me over quite over the top, which was for the um, removal of the rodent infestation insulation, which um, wasn't in the original budget. I did bring the original budget proposal to then and um, and then I did bring the uh, work that was done so far, which is two thirds of the work, which- How many separate documents do you have? I'm, I'm counting separate, and counting my, each page of my tax return. You mean? Yeah. Um, in context, I would guess that. And you and just I'm have one- pass them around. If just have interested. one copy? Yes because I don't want um, unnecessarily for things to go into public record, but I want everybody to see it. For, mm -hmm. And I did bring the worksheet that um, I was given at the city clerk's office. Okay, and so you're, to, to be clear, your uh, request for an abatement is based on the uh, provision of state law that says that anyone who, who does not have the ability to pay their taxes can come before, can request an abatement. And so, so can you give us in your oral testimony what your income and expenses are that we can, uh, so that we can evaluate this? Yes. Oh. I'm gonna include things that the worksheet that I was given at the city clerk office does not um, include. I have, I have social security of $956 per month. I received $290 in, um, I guess it's a combination of medical expenses and uh, it's called SS, it's food stamps, it's enforcement. Okay. Would you just state your income and then your expenses? I'm stating all my income right now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll be clear. I'm trying to be clear. Sure. $956 in Social Security, $290 in state's assistance. One um, full benefit this year for my heating costs, starting with $1,059, $1,059. And then I received a grant, an anonymous grant for $750, and then Capstone did a split ticket with Burt Bourne um, Energy and they are my propane purveyor and that is cooking as well as heating. Mm -hmm. So that would average out to an, an amount, but I've, so I put a star next to that in where I put my housing expenses, there's a star there. Um, what else, that's it for my income. Okay. So what's your total monthly? Did you add that up? Yes. Um, no, I did not add that up because they asked me to leave out one. I can do that. I bet somebody here has already done that as we as we've been talking. Okay. So we can get the last one. Something from Capstone. Yeah. So I would say, um, let's see. Sorry about that. I didn't see where to add that up. Um, Wasn't there some spousal maintenance last time you testified too? Yes, there was, and it's it's erratic, but I do, on an average, receive 
$500 a month for spousal maintenance. It is not in record. I received $290 in state's assistance and my fuel so far has been paid by um, fuel assistance and grant. And that would be a $233 expense averaged out over 12 months. That would be. So that works out to like two through 33 a month in fuel assistance. It does, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody else coming up with 1979. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you have as a total? Because I 1979. Okay. Okay. And uh, could you go over your expenses then? Yeah. So property taxes average out monthly to be four hundred forty-six dollars and seventy-nine cents. I'm on a electric average right now. It's sixty-eight dollars. The heat average to two hundred thirty-three dollars per month. That's heat as cook well as cooking propane. Water and septic fifty-five. I did. That's a little bit of a guesstimate. Telephone is thirty-seven dollars fifty cents. Cable internet service thirty-six dollars. Home owners insurance one hundred seventy-five dollars. That's all. That's still a month. What's that? That's still uh, 175 a month for homeowners insurance? Yes. Okay. And is there anything else? <clears throat> oh, um, yes. Pro okay. Food groceries, 500 a month. Transportation, gasoline, 137 a month. Car insurance, $73 a month. And under just the other, oh, okay, that's that. Then under miscellaneous pet care supplies, $50 a month and other $40 a month. So that came to 90. And have you already added all that up? I have not added it all. Okay. Sorry. 1750. 1750. You've got okay. Trust your math a little more than I trust you. <laughs> and I, I think that what you've told us so far doesn't include any of the money that you've put into the house, which I gather is uh, one of your biggest expenses or your, what kind of pushes you over the edge. Is that right? Yeah. I have right here um, the budget that the, the contractor's name is Purchase and Holding Company. That's Peter Bogart. Um, his estimate was for $103,000. Came up to uh, over, with, just for him alone, um, $110,000. And then ran into the um, rodent infestation issue that cost so far another 10 well it didn't add up his i didn't differentiate between his and that but it has added up so far to two pages of this um, yeah so nine nine hundred i'm sorry 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 Four thousand seven hundred sixty dollars plus eighteen hundred forty dollars. Those are the two amounts. One was the removal of the insulation throughout the building. The other, the smaller amount, the eighteen hundred 
forty dollars worth of, was for the blown in thirty six inches of cellulose over just the living quarters of the city. So this isn't for the exterminator. This is for replacing the rodent damage. Right. And it does not include what uh, the estimate for for the uh, next part of the building will be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Do you have a mortgage payment? No, I don't. I paid cash for it. I sold my little farm and bought. So I think the last time you visited us, you were um, working on getting maybe a home equity loan. Yeah. So um, where that stands right now is that it's being called by, um, here it is, by Michelle and ADU. I did not qualify for the um, loan estimate here. I went, went for 50000 for it. The estimate is 47 thousand five hundred and ninety seven dollars but a pre fault so that was a blow because i thought it was in pre-approval state when it came in last time but i did qualify in a pre-approval way for the fda loan grant because i'm a senior citizen and for the um, roof i have an estimate for it that is, is for painting it they don't usually do grant money for painting a metal roof. But in this case, because it is a 50 year roof that has been painted three times, it's not leaking. They are considering the grant money for the painting of that roof. Um, that's the status it's at right now. I am in, I had a two hour telephone interview where all my expenses went out and then the discussion came in, what does the building need, the building itself need? And I was asked to discuss all the repairs, which are multiple, but I also did say that I was wanting to, to um, apply and, and obtain a loan for you know, an auxiliary dwelling unit, which would tie into my you know, heating system that I put in um, used all the same infrastructure, but that that would be an income bearing so that I can afford the bill and my overhead. And it's a three month process. They work, they micromanage with the contractor. Um, the money goes to the contractor, to the each. You know, say I run up bill RK miles, they it would go there. I don't see the money when it flow through. It's micromanaged. Um, I've had three discussions with them and, and um, so I'm chasing that avenue down. I have no, I don't want to say I'm in pre-approval, but I did get a pre-qualification notice. And then and I have the estimate for that included in all this paperwork here. If anybody wants to be passed around, I'm happy to pass it around. And I also was this past week um, notified that I do qualify for weatherization. Weatherization is coming on Tuesday to look at the, um, mostly it's, it's insulation, but they're also going to look at this rodent infestation need for abatement um, of that. So I don't have any balance sheet or answer about where that would put me financially when I go working really hard for the FDA loan. Mm -hmm. The loan is a, is a $10,000 grant, and then any spillover would go into a loan. So there's a grant, and the, then there's a 40,000 cap loan, and I have no idea what they're going to say to me. Mm -hmm. And um, did you say, are you current on your taxes? At present? I'm not, oh no, I'm not current on my taxes. I have that sheet. I'm behind on my taxes. Um, oh, it's right there. So 
so organized that I can't find it. Um, 3,000. $3,477.69. That includes the interest owed to date. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? Mary. Um, I want to make sure I'm understanding. This is a request for the abatement of prior taxes, not future taxes. I think that's right. Yes. And so the potential of loan or grants or all of that is a future issue. And I think we're just looking at the income status. Of, I, mean, I think that's the question before us, whatever question we have in terms of income related issues. I think that's, that's right. How, is that yeah. my thinking about this correctly. I think you are, yeah. Okay. And so are you asking for us to abate this 347769? Is that the, the amount that you're asking? For that is what I'm asking, yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. According to the tax bill that was sent out to us, the total taxes for the year are 5361. Right. So I just said we're only looking back, not forward. Oh, but that's what the, that portion up to the thirty-four has been paid up, ah, and ah, okay. um, and then this portion that I am addressing that is still outstanding includes an interest. Yeah. Okay. Any member of the board have any other questions? Does anyone want to make a motion? I move the abatement. And is there a second? I second. I thought we were waiting. Well, just... this is, I was, I agree. I was thinking the same, but this is a, um, not it, a yeah. it's, it's not related to the flood. It's not part of the, but it's, but right. we clarify that right. so folks don't wonder why we're only debating why and not everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so the, the same is true with regard to personal property abatements. We we had not well, held those, we acted on those immediately too, I believe. But so is there any discussion about uh, about the question. I feel conflicted about it because obviously the, the, um, the appellant had um, indicated a, a pretty low income, but there is an asset here. Um, and I feel pretty uncomfortable about waiving um, the taxes on that and not putting that burden on other low income taxpayers in Montpelier when there is an asset that hasn't been um, I think the question is, is there an ability to pay? And there is an asset that hasn't been used in order to, to acquire some funds to pay oh, the taxes. Can I, um, can I address that? I'm sorry. Oh, oh sorry. So, so I feel pretty uncomfortable um, granting this abatement for that reason. Um, even though there's a demonstrated pretty low income. Continue. Ready to go with your hand up. I absolutely agree with Rosie. That was my... Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in a very similar place. Um, I have great sympathy to the to the, the situation of um, the low income. Um, I do remember at the, the last time we talked about this, there was some discussion that um, the the plan to request an abatement came during the the, the closing process and um, before the rodent infestation had happened and. Perhaps I'm mistaken about that, but that was what I, I thought that I heard. And so it seemed like abating the taxes was built into the overall plan for making this property purchase work. And I don't I don't feel comfortable asking the rest of Montpelier taxpayers to shoulder that. Any other comments from 
members of the board, and I know the taxpayer had a had a response she wanted to make. So, uh, Mary, and then Val. As I maybe I misunderstood the the written request. But I thought the indication was that the um, property owner wasn't able to take advantage of the income related abatement that would normally be provided because this was a property in transition. And if she'd owned it for 10 years, she would have been able to make the application. And I'm forgetting the words for the. Yes. Income sensitivity. Thank you, income sensitivity. Yeah, I um, think she didn't own the property at the by the deadline of uh, right. filing the homestead declaration. That that was what I assumed, and it. I appreciate the shifting of the of the tax liability question or the burden to other Montpelier folks, but. Have we in the past um, taken into consideration just the timing issue of people not having been able to um, take advantage of that, of the income subsidy? Could you folks move that microphone? Because oh, I'm done just... now, Kim. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, but... Just going by recollection, I remember we had a case that came before us probably five years ago, it was probably, it was before the uh, pandemic where someone came in and there was a dispute about whether they had filed their property, their, uh, their homestead declaration on time and they thought they had and the tax department thought they had not. And so they didn't get credit for income sensitivity. And I think that that was the only reason they didn't have the money to get the pay the taxes, and I don't think their abatement was approved. But mm -hmm. I don't think it was either. Yeah. Oh, Val and then Sal. Um, yeah, I I basically have a lot of uh, conflicting feelings about this as well, based on you know I agree with Carrie and with Rosie and Tim. Sal. So. Um. I, I actually did not hear the, the motion. W which way is the motion going? What is the actual motion? The motion is to grant the abatement in the amount of 347769, which is the total unpaid uh, taxes for the year. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from the members of the board? Okay. I know you wanted to respond. No, I just didn't know if, if I made it clear that when I, but I think I did. When I first came to see you, I thought I was pre approved for the loan based on the bank I had. And that was um, for whatever reason, how those things go. I was pre approved after that for $20,000 which does nothing for the, I mean, then that's a $371 amount per month. And it just came to me that I had to table that, do the repairs, get the building sound, safe, repaired and solid, and then, and pursue this roof issue and, and the loan, the FDA loan. I did, it's a HELOC, it is based on, the equity, my income, and it came to $20,000, which doesn't do that thing, which would be bringing in revenue to be able to pay the taxes, insurance, and just basically the fundamental nuts and bolts overhead. So that is the thing that the status that did change. I just didn't know if I made it clear that it was an equity-based loan. Okay. Okay. All right, anything else? If not, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 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 And we'll have to have a roll call. Um, Tim? 
No. I, oh, sorry, Mary. Uh, I, I'm in favor of the group. Yes. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Which way were we going? No. Can you vote a yes? Uh, Charlotte? No. Rosie? No. Val? No. Mary? No. Sal? No. Adrian? No. And Sarah? No. Okay, the motion fails. Sorry, thank you. Thanks for coming in. That is our decision. Next up, we have Colleen Manier, uh, Langdon Street Tavern. Yes. And here you are online. Okay. So, am I right in thinking that this is just the personal pro No, this is not just a personal property. It's so the personal property tax for the tavern. Okay, just the personal property. Yeah. yeah. And too many papers here. So is your situation that basically just everything in the tavern got wiped out? It did. I mean, obviously, you know, in Montpelier, Langdon Street got hit pretty hard with the with the flood and um, we had to totally rebuild. So yes, you're correct. Okay. And the amount seven oh four point oh four. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Is that ever three quarters or is that the whole year? I think this is the whole. It was the whole year. That's the whole year. Yeah. yeah. 176.01 a quarter. Did we do the whole year for everybody else on no, personal we property? Didn't. We didn't. No. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, my question is, uh, have, has everything been replaced at this point? It has, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we did one other time was we we abated the portion up to when everything was replaced. I think. So, 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 right. yeah. so when did you when did you replace the personal property? Um. Well, we were able to reopen at the end of October, so that was when everything was replaced by. So that's so like four months. Four months. Correct. Yep. So is there a motion to abate four months worth of four twelfths of 70404? Sure, if somebody can figure that out. I <laughs> think <laughs> you're not the one doing it, yeah. I think it's 17601, maybe. Which would be one quarter. Does that sound great? Mm. <laughs> no, a quarter that's is three months. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, what, what was the what's the whole seven oh four? Seven oh four oh four oh four. Two thirty four sixty eight. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we abate that for what, 234? What was it, Jack? 234.68 is what I can make. 234.68. Uh, move that we abate the personal property taxes in that amount. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. You are all set. So um, just a question. So I'm assuming that there's probably a balance due and how do I rectify that to get a bill so we can pay? Do I work with Beverly Hill or? I think probably talk to Bev. That's probably the way to go about it. And so I should give some time for the abatement to be applied before reaching out to her? 
Charlotte. That sounds that sounds right to me. It's a good idea. And, and can you tell? I just don't want to be behind, so I need to know when to reach out to her for an updated well, we, invoice. We'll be sending you a decision, so I would say a couple of weeks. You'll be sending out a new invoice to the tavern. I'll be sending out a report to you of the decision. And okay. Then out to that's when I would reach out to Ben. Just give her in a, a couple week. of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions for me? No, nope, we're all set. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Next up, Charles Haas. Come on up. And I, I read your uh, your request for abatement, and I think you're before the wrong body for this. Sarah, I wasn't really sure what abatement meant, and Sarah handed me the form, and uh, I, I was thinking it was appeal of the value. I was confused, so. Right. So just take take what I had written in there as well that I was confused. But then they said that maybe I should come up now for the abatement, which makes sense. Um, I just didn't know what an abatement meant. I thought abatement meant abating the assessed value or something. I, I didn't know. Okay. I had never well, even heard of this. Let me try to clar clarify this for you because there there's two separate questions. One is <clears throat> your what you filed is basically saying that uh, judging by the damage to uh, to your neighbor's property across the street that that and the, the difficulty they're having selling that property that it makes you think that your property is probably worth worth less than its current assessment and so that's a request essentially an appeal of your assessment and that's something you can do once a year and so uh later this year you'll get a new property tax bill with your new assessment or you'll get your new assessment and you can appeal that and that comes before a different but very similar body called the board of civil authority um, but there's also a process called the request for an abatement where someone can uh request that some of their property taxes can be uh, abated, which is they can be relieved of the burden of paying that, either based on the fact that the property was uh, destroyed in whole or in part, or that they don't have the financial ability to pay the property taxes. Now, none of that is in your uh, request now, but you could certainly go back and file a new request for an abatement because someone can always file a request for an abatement. So, can I just ask? Yeah. You had what damage? Yeah. Okay. The house is basically unlivable. Okay. Um, so, I'm the assessor. How about if I come over next week and we can probably get ahead of this before before it has to go to grievance? Because there are a bunch of houses that were flooded and we're going to readjust the We're going to adjust the values before the next grant list comes out. Well, the other. Thing. Uh, well, my next door neighbor, Katie, decided she would take the buyout. Um, but, <clears throat> but I've been in the house for a long time, and my kids were raised in the house, and they said very clearly that they really were hoping that, to not do that. We wanted to save the house because it means a lot to all of us. We've been in the house for a long time. The kids have been raised in the house playing there in the river and everything, and nobody really wanted to sell the house. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to keep yeah. it. As far as, but after the abatement thing was explained to me, after I had written that thing, and um, I realized, oh, well, I, wrote, I wrote thinking it was the other thing, the appeal for the right. assessed value. But then I said, well, okay. I'll just come here anyway and just forget about what I wrote because 
that didn't make sense. It was for something else because they didn't understand what it was. If you've had damage to the home, we have to adjust those values accordingly. So if I come over and take a look at your house next week, yeah. I can we can adjust the value of your home for the next grand list, which will be lodged okay. in mid June. Okay. Well, is it possible though to get an abatement for this year for some of the tax? <clears throat> well, well, another one of the problems, which has nothing to do with the flood, uh, was that. Um, I was paying, well, the quarterly payments was $320 last year, and then they went up to $791 this year, and not mostly because of our income, but I, I think John had said maybe it was because that the state payments were based on the assessment for a year, right. bef year before, and the next year would probably go up, so that what I owed would be more similar to that. Yeah. So you have a you have a income sensitivity payment. Yeah. And the city the city had just gone through a reappraisal. We ran into this before where they they don't. Yeah. They cross in the mail, so you don't get that yeah. credit until so, this coming. So for year. the following year, it would you will get it for this year. And we realized that, and but we had been saving up some money and said, okay, well, okay, we'll come up with the money somehow. And. My daughters were in the house in the two bedrooms on the first floor when the flood came. And um, well, the idea was my pregnant daughter who and my granddaughter, three-year-old granddaughter, were in their bedroom and someone from our church offered her a place to stay to have the baby. And then, but then they needed the house back. So she went to stay with relatives somewhere else. And since our house wasn't very livable, we have, no kitchen, no real bathroom, no hot water, and heat in a tiny little part of what used to be the kitchen. It wasn't very livable in the winter, so we went to spend the time with them. In the winter, we were gone for three months. So the house haven't been very livable, and now we've come back to try to uh, use the help we can get to try to start fixing up the house. Mm -hmm. um, now, let, me, let me ask you another question. Have you been in communication with uh, with Mike Miller or Josh Jerome from our? Uh, yes, with Josh, I saw Josh. Housing Community Development Office. Yes, because it seems like you may qualify for assistance from FEMA. Possibly, you'd be one of those people who'd be looking to uh, have your house elevated as opposed to a buyout. Yes, well, that's what he. That's what I applied for. So with Josh, um, the elevation of the house. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of questions we had about that. Um, and he didn't really know the answers and said, well, we'll have to figure it out, um, how we can do that. But uh, I think I should just start trying to use what we got uh, from FEMA now, money which didn't come until late and that point in the winter was coming and we couldn't really stay there in the winter. But yeah. now I think we should just start trying to put the house back together as much as we can now. And we've gotten some help now. And, um, so basically what I decided I should ask for here is since what I have to pay for the taxes is $791 per every three months. I, we paid them um, the one in the summer and the fall and the winter. We've already paid them, but it was a stretch to do that. And um, the new one's coming up in May. And uh, we haven't had much of an income since we were away. And so I was just hoping that some of it could be whatever you would feel comfortable abating. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not, I have no figure, particular figure I'm asking for, but whatever you could do to help. I'm gonna go through the whole list of questions that we're asking of people who have flood damage, because it definitely seems like we should, should be getting significant abatement based on the damage to the property. And so I'll just go over, um, did you lose the ability to use the, property for at least 60 days. Oh, yes. And did you uh, lose uh, the access to utilities for at least 60 days? Oh, yeah. yes, completely. Um, the property wasn't condemned. No. 
Um, has the property been rated substantially damaged by the city? I have no idea. Okay. Um, but my, <clears throat> I don't. I don't know the answer. To sure. That. And with regard to the uh, to the whole uh, property, we're looking at the diff the ratio between the total square feet and the building and the number of square feet that are damaged. So in your property, was the damage all on the basement first floor? Did, was there any damage on the second floor? No. Okay. Our bedroom is on the second floor. My, my wife and I, our bedroom is on the second floor, and there's no damage to that. It's exactly the way it was before. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it isn't. It doesn't have any heat. But we can sleep there using an electric space heater, which winds up costing a lot of money, but we can do it, which is what we have been doing. We applied for um, a grant or whatever that they would try to pay for us to have another place to live. Um, but that hasn't come through. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, we're supposed, I'm supposed, I have a meeting tomorrow morning with somebody, uh, Leo Buell at Capstone was supposed to be looking into things like that. Um, but our bedroom is fine. It's just that we have no kitchen. It's just that it's in a house that's a total wreck other than the bedroom. Well, the problem was that the first floor was completely renovated. And the second floor was not completely renovated. But uh -huh. the first floor was, and that was what was completely destroyed. Yep. And the basement and the heating system and the electrical and all of that in the basement was destroyed. Um, so we're moving all of that up to the first floor. Um, um, well, it seems and, uh, like we could get in touch with uh, with Josh or Mike and see. It seems like this is probably count rated as substantially damaged, but uh, we'll figure it, we'll find that out. Yeah. So Does any other board members have any other questions? No, I just signed one of those to see why there was a list of substantially damaged properties. Yeah, I, I, there there is. Is. I just don't have it with me, but there I have one. Yeah, I don't think it was on there, but clearly it's close. Yeah, we know exactly where your house is, and it's knowing what the house across the street did, it's hard to hard to believe yours isn't, but yeah. We'll we'll find out about yeah. that. You were there when we had the uh, when the truck came to take our things. Yep. And I was in the bridge on the front room. Numaha is sitting on the top of his on the roof of his flood damaged car watching the seven foot pile of trash being taken away. Yes. It was because it was the first one. Us and Katie, our neighbor, were the first people who had it the trash taken away. So yep. um Okay, we, I think we have enough information to go on, and and you uh, and you'll uh, get together with the assessor, and he'll figure out what your new value should be. But meanwhile, we'll put this you on the list as one of the cases that we're going to be evaluating next week to decide what uh, level of abatement you should receive. Okay. And, yeah. And then we'll get a written decision out to you. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. Next up, we have uh, Mary Clark. Okay. No Mary Clark here, huh? That's a five pound six. Is the person identified as iPhone six? Could you unmute yourself and let us know if you're Mary Clark? That's me, and I'm not oh, Mary oh, Clark. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that clarifies that. Real quick and check, make sure there isn't somebody. Downstairs, although they all know the signs there. out there down there, yeah. yeah. They all know everybody down there controlling the work. So. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I can have, uh, yeah. Okay. We'll skip that one. We, and we've done that uh, on previous cases. If the person hasn't been there, we haven't just rejected it without making an attempt to contact them. Um, Casey Ellison. All right, is there Casey Ellison here? Is that the same as Mary Clark? Okay. No, no. Okay. Marsha? I think these are people who were supposed to be here last week. Yeah, yeah but we work, we reached out to them verbally um, over the phone, so I'm not sure what's up. So they should, have, should all know. Yeah, they do all know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just concerned about the KCL is one is is unrelated, and so yeah, we have that deadline of the fifteenth to make a decision on that. Yeah. Well, we can try to squeeze them in on Monday. Yeah. Um, Marshall Plant. Uh, excellent. You're here. Great. <laughs> All right. And you are independent screen. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? I have the questions, but I will go over them. But why don't you just tell us a little bit? Uh, yes, I live at 42 Independent Screen. And um, I'm applying under the uh, category of taxes or changes upon real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year and specifically flood damage. Um, on, um, during the disaster, uh, starting July uh, 10th, there was a significant amount of runoff from the development uh, above First Grease Farm Condominium Association, where I live, um, and my basement became uh, flooded. Uh, the, the entire basement was flooded at a level of approximately an inch and a half of water. Um, kind neighbors came in and helped me remove the water, which was much appreciated. After a, a few days of um, drying, it became clear from the odor and the appearance that more was going to be, have to be done. So I contacted um, the SERPRO uh, uh, company and they did an assessment and said that in, indeed there was uh, water absorbed and contamination. So um, later in July, they provided demolition and decontamination uh, uh, services and drying. Um, I submitted to Sarah um, some photos that are uh, labeled uh, before flood and photos one through four are um, the basement prior to the flood. Uh, photos five through seven are those same areas of the basement after the flood and after the uh, demolition. Um, the uh, the the main base the main reason why I uh, submitted the abatement application was at my most recent valuation um, the condo included a finished basement and a three quarter bath at the basement level. Um, now post flood, I this the property includes an unfinished basement and. Um, uh, no bathroom. Um, I also should say that since the original incident, I, I know you've heard this many times, um, my basement has continued to flood every time there's a heavy rain. I recorded seven different incidents in the summer and early fall. Uh, I, I kind of stopped recording after a while. I, um, since then, in the late fall, uh, I have had a sump pump installed, and um, um, which of course is dependent on electricity. So I believe that there, uh, 
there could be there will be future risk of flooding. Um, I, I did want to clarify too in my application that at no time was I unable to live on the first and the second floors of my condo. So, and I can provide some financial information uh, if you uh, like about costs. Okay, well, let's, uh, in, in your case, all the bent damage was to the basement, not to any of the other levels. Correct. Okay. And uh, for the property, for the part of the property that uh, was damaged, was it unable to be used for 60 days or more? No. Was there ever a time when they, you had a loss of utilities? No. Uh, and the total square feet versus, versus the damaged square feet, are all the levels the same area? Um, the, the, the three uh, levels of the, the, uh, of the condo are the same square footage. There's also a, a screen porch and a garage. Neither of those were damaged either. Mm -hmm. So one third, mm -hmm. it was damaged to one third. Yes. Square footage. Yes. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? All right, we'll be taking your case up along with all the others and making decisions. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to do this. I know it's such an incredibly long road. Okay, Carla, and you don't have to stick around. You're certainly welcome to, but uh, anyone whose cases are done, you don't need to stay till the end. I'm here with my boss. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, right. no Got it. Okay, Carlo Rovetto. Okay. And you are here. Okay. All right. And you have two requests, and I think one is real property and one is personal property. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And. Uh, And this is positive pi. Correct. Okay. Um, why don't I? Why don't you just tell us uh, in a few words what happened to your property? Um. So essentially, the whole the restaurant in its entirety was damaged. Um. You know, we had a a full working basement, twenty six hundred feet. Um, they had a 2,200 foot raised floor built in, you know, and, uh, you know, they had a um, VCT tile and then our kitchens were up on that raised floor, walk-in coolers, offices, locker rooms, compressor rooms, um, three walk-in coolers were there, um, our liquor storage, dry storage, just basically uh, just the whole place just was 12 feet underwater. I mean, 12 feet of water right to the top, and then it was another three feet. So we're talking 16 feet of water in the restaurant itself. And um, so the restaurant itself got three feet of water in it, approximately. Um, so we had to tear up, you know, everything. The floors, they would got all messed up. Um, you know, we had to rebuild the entire restaurant, essentially. You know, we, we put in new floors. We did a lot of infrastructure. Um, Mitigation. I'm going to ask you to, if you could if you could keep your voice a little higher. I think some people are having trouble hearing. Yeah, so we did a lot of flood mitigation work, you know, as we were rebuilding. Um, but the the damage is ex extensive. I mean, we're talking it's going to land somewhere between six and seven hundred thousand dollars to rebuild that restaurant. Um, so it's just been a rough road. Um, you know, I, I'm. Hundred thousand dollars behind in my taxes with the state of Vermont. Um, I have to catch up with them, which I'll be. You know, I just worked out a payment plan with them, but you know, just took on a thirty-year loan for half a million dollars. I had some friends and family trying to help me, and just basically have to start. You know, I was I was three years away from being out of debt with that restaurant, and now I'm thirty, going in for thirty more years. Um, so it's a sad story all around. It's really it's been it's been a really rough road the last eight months. I mean, I'm there working 18 to 20 hours a day for the last five months trying to get this thing 
back up and running and uh you know haven't been able to sleep <laughs> to be honest with you it's been rough so i i didn't even know about this tax abatement thing to be honest i just walked in to talk to the town clerk when she mentioned it to me i'm like man any help at all would be so appreciated so i just filled out the forms right then and there and and here i am great so i'm gonna i've got a set of questions so i'm gonna uh go over with you um the first question is, did you have a loss of use of the property for more than 60 days? The answer is clearly yes. Um, and uh, did you have loss of uh, utility service to the property for at least 60 days? Yes. Um, you had, uh, did you have income loss for the property? Yes. Clearly yes. Yes. Amen. And the total square feet uh, over over the damaged square feet or the other way around. Um, is the second floor the same square footage as the other two yeah, floors? It's, 20, it's, it's a little bigger, 2,800 square feet, because there's a, in the basement, there's a boiler room that's part of the condo association altogether in that building. So that occupies a small corner, which is, a you know, it's shared. So, yes, it's 2,800 square feet in the, in the, in the, First floor. And um, the the could you uh, remind us when the uh, the takeout and uh, opened up? Takeout opened up about five weeks ago. I want to say six weeks, and that's okay. operating at a loss right now. Um, and, you know, we did have the food truck, too, for a little while, and that operated at a loss, too, mostly just to keep our employees, key employees working. Yep. Um, and the takeout has been operating at a loss because we have two, you know, pretty high-paid salaried managers that are helping to get our staff staffed up for – we had to hire all new staff for the dining room in the front of the house, and there's you know, so many big plates and things that's got to get ordered and shelving and – TVs and whatnot. So they're helping get while I'm doing the construction, they've been instrumental in trying to get all the, the particulars ready to try to get that dining room up and running. So that's and, why, you know, it, you know, labor's it's labor heavy right now. Yep. So we get that and, dining room open. And when do you think the dining room's gonna be open? Well, we're hoping by Monday. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. been a quite a road and it's like what well, it's sort of coming to the end of that road and I'm just like so excited to be honest with you to kind of like put this behind me and get this restaurant up and running again. I just heard heard from a friend today. She's eager to have she and everyone she works with is eager to have the bar open. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh it's beautiful. I mean we did like I said we 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 took out all the walls, you know, all the studs and insulation out four feet up and we replaced it with cement block and bricks. You know, basically built the thing like a shower um, to try to handle, you know, because it's just a matter yep. of time before another flood comes. And I'm just trying to not be shut down for seven months, you know, three months. Yeah. Well, the the back looks great. I like to go pick up a slice when I'm on, on my way to city council meetings. And so I, <laughs> I'm a regular there. Um, Thank you. Appreciate any it. members have any other questions? Okay. So the pro process is that we will make a decision on uh, on that uh, presumably at our meeting next Monday okay. and now we can move on to your personal property yep. and the amount of your personal property bill someone have it handy 1523 okay and all that stuff has, has been replaced by now, is that right? Yep. And you've heard us talking about this before. When was the personal property uh, replaced? So it's just been like over the last four months, basically, you know, piece by piece, you know, equipment, walk-in coolers, tables, chairs, bar stools, POS, computer systems, all that kind of stuff slowly 
little by little. As as thing is, I, I just received some SBA money. Um, so the stress was since I started the project five weeks ago, you know, we were running out of money every two weeks, you know, and I, I'd have to ask friends and family for 50 to 70,000 every couple of weeks. I have to go to another person and be humble and be like, Hey, can I borrow money? Cause my SBA never came in. Um, then I took a $170,000 loan at 18% interest because I had to pay contractors. And so I've racked up 480,000 just Thank God I got good friends and and thank God there's money sharks out there. But, you know, I just did whatever I had to do to get this restaurant open because once the, the wheels started turning and um, we started building, you know, all the employees were eager to get the thing open and we didn't want to stop. So so on the eclipse, two minutes before the eclipse, the SBA loan came through for 500 So now I'm wiring all the money back to everybody that I borrowed from. So to say the least it's like you know it's just we're on top of trying to build the restaurant and then on friday your account says hey we need to put seventy thousand dollars in the bank by four o'clock today that's that's the situation i was every other week you know it was just it was it was quite a feat to be honest with you i, I don't even know about miraculous that i pulled it off but i was ready to jump off a bridge a few times i'll tell you that it's crazy okay so thank you does any any other member of the board have any questions? Or do we have a motion on the property tax uh, abatement, uh, personal property tax abatement? Thinking about splitting the difference and like picking a middle of the last four months as a point in time to abate too. Does that work for me? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it would be eight months. Like July to February. Right. Okay, does that work for everybody? Um, I would, uh, if you get one thousand sixteen forty-five. How much? One thousand sixteen forty-five. Okay, that's the I'll, motion. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. There you are. You've got your personal property tax abatement and we'll make a decision on the real property tax abatement. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Okay, Niraj Tiwari. One hundred Main Street personal property. Yeah. Didn't we get a note that they wouldn't be here? Did we? Uh, so weren't they going to be on Zoom? I thought they were oh. going to be on Zoom. Well, we'll be ready for them for- Pretty straightforward. Yeah, no, the, the email says that they won't be able to make it to the meeting. So I've attached the answers to your standard for oh. the and questions. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And this is just and personal just property, came, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. That just came Tuesday. Okay. Do we have enough information to uh, do a motion based on that? Do we know when when they would have replaced everything? This one reopened. From the flood date until January 11th. Oh, my business was not able to be open. So it looks like he's saying from by January 11th, the business was able to be open. Which you presumably means there is personal property, property. back on the site right. at that That's time. What it, yeah, because it suggests he's able to open. So his personal property is 268.48. So six months, a little more than six yeah. months. Yeah, six, six months seems about right. So half. Half. So the motion is to date 134.24 in uh, personal property taxes. Val, you're making the motion. I'll make the motion. 
Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, Harold and Darlene Wood. Your is Clark's ride. I'm guessing. All right. Why don't you? Well, we we are we live on uh, thirty four Independence Green. We were in the, another building, the Marshall plant, and we basically have the same problem. It flooded in July tenth, and uh, we had extensive water damage in our basement. We had a a family room. And then that was off, and that had carpeting, had sheetrock paint. And then we had a bath, a three fourths bathroom, which had vinyl flooring, shower and tub and sink. And then we had a laundry room, and it was all sectioned off. But the carpet was all pulled completely out of there. The sheetrock was cut um, and was, you know, removed. All the molding around was removed. And I didn't put this in. This is an amendment. We ended up now taking out the whole shower because. We had maybe water again. The water came in under the shower, so we had to pull the shower out. So now we, we just have a towel in the bathroom right now. Uh -huh. So it's it's uh we don't we don't have a all we have now is a basement. We, there's nothing down there because I'm except a pile of furniture that's you know we have to do something with, but it's not going to be a finished basement anymore because we just can't put the money into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had Serve Pro come up, and they are the ones that mitigated all the, the cheap rock and the molding and they you know, they got rid of our sink they got rid of it, a lot of stuff and we it just mainly asking for some kind of a, a appraisal to have it come assessed again to see what it's really worth and and we paid we've been paying our taxes ever since august and we're straight through to february and we just don't know if it's worth you know what was appraised for Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, how deep did uh, did the water get in your place? We have water every time it rains. Um, we get thirty eight gallons in forty minutes. We have it's like a it's like you have to be down there every fifteen minutes to vacuum it up. You know, we all we have two big ten gallon vacuum cleaners, and we're just even nighttime vacuuming it up. Mm -hmm. We did have we uh, the the association. We didn't do the pump system because the association wanted to go another way with it, which was. It was, we had Vermont uh, sealed, they sealed all the way around the basement. They, they pumped stuff in the cracks in the floor. But I mean, since after I moved the shower, they'd be able to do underneath the shower. So we're waiting to see what's going to happen with that. We haven't had sufficient rain to find out what's really going to happen. So that's what we're waiting for now. Yep. And we do have pictures of the basement before, you know, when it had the shower and after we pulled it out. So it's... And no damage to uh, anything above the basement level? No, no, no that was livable. Well, that's good. So again, like the, like the, the other folk, the other one, uh, you didn't lose use of the property for more than 60 days? No. Um, didn't use lose utilities for more no. than 60 days. Um, and total square footage versus the damage square footage. Is it the same thing where this, the, uh, all the floors are the same square same footage? Size. Yes. And so one third. Well, the bathroom. And that was bigger because well, there's no wall there. But, but the basic size of the room. Oh, okay. Same square footage. Okay, and and you heard uh, heard Marty talk to the other person that you might be someone else that he would want to come over. Yeah, maybe yes. you guys could all call my office on Monday. We'll schedule time next week. Okay. And adjust your values. Okay. Any other questions from members of the board? Okay, we'll get a decision out to you. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for much. coming in. And last up, enterprises. I just sat there and just pretended I wasn't there. <laughs> well, um, 
I know people are not crazy about public speaking. So we'll, we try to be pretty, uh, pretty welcoming, try to make it as easy as possible. Um, so why don't you tell us what happened to you? Yes, um, so it's listed as Enterprises LLC. So more people in other properties housing the Anna Mount Pillar and Penza Pizza. Um, so obviously we were right in the thick of it for the flooding. Um, we did lose the entire property use thereof for more than 60 days. There are three buildings on the property, an apartment building, and then two separate buildings that comprise the inn itself, one being nine rooms in the restaurant and the second being 10 rooms, just solely dedicated to in rooms. Um, and sequentially, all were flooded completely through the basement. We lost all um, utilities, furnaces, um, AC units on the property, substantial damage, uh, served from mitigated for three weeks there. Um, we opened the building sequentially, so the apartment building first to try and get family and staff back there. For That was just about the 60-day mark. The first in-building and restaurant opened, reopened September 20th. And the last building, which had the most significant damage to 10 in-rooms, we flooded into the first level. So that was a complete gut job of that as well. Um, we have partially reopened there, and I just have to schedule now uh, the meeting for the CO for the rest of that building. So we're hoping next couple of weeks to have that fully reopened here. And let's see, 60 days, more than 60 days loss of usage, more than 60 days of loss of utilities, um, lost income, clearly, and the total square footage versus the damaged square footage? Uh, not the all three buildings together are 19,200 square feet. Um, the White House completely out of commission until now is uh, 6,200 square feet. And the, uh, the main building is 8,900 square feet with the nine rooms in the restaurant. And the rest of square footage is the apartment building. Uh -huh. what, what was the second square footage? Sorry. So the end was 62, and then the second one was. The main is 8,900. 8,900. Yeah. Anyone have any other questions? Is this, oh, go ahead, Mary. So the upper floors were not damaged, but were not usable because you didn't have access to utilities, et cetera. And the damages in the first floor, the, all the floors redone, the yeah. porch access, the, the properties were fully not condemned, but certificates of occupancy were revoked until inspections could be done on that work. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. So, and is, is that the way you've been operating for a while using the apartment building for employees? Just... Housing in Montpelier is difficult. I personally have a program where uh, we just uh, do a discounted rent for staff and I don't ask for a security deposit or last month rent because it's very difficult enough. So the apartment building is 10 units and eight of those are currently staff members and various, yeah. We need more housing. And <laughs> it's, an, it's an impediment to hiring, hiring staff, right? Yes, sir. Yep. It's pretty fabulous to have a business owner who is stepping up and doing that sort of work. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. Anyone have any other questions? Yeah, you have two bills here, right? Is this one for, um, yeah, one for the personal property? I'm not applying for the personal property, just for the property tax. For enterprises, it looks like there's there's another entity, Endeavors, which is the operating company began, which has a small personal property tax bill. But I don't want to waste the taxpayers' time on that one because there's a bill for eighteen thousand, and then the tax bill for fifty-seven thousand. Am I missing something? There? Is that not is that not part of I don't see fifty seven thousand. No, this one this is your this is the tax bill. Oh for the year, yes. I'm yeah. sorry, yes. So so what is that one? 
That's not for the personal property? No, this no. is tied to that. Okay. These are the quarterly payment amounts okay. for the annual. Okay. I think we're set then. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so I think we know. Um, now, now this has us down as abatement deliberations, but we're not doing that until next week, right? Right. That yeah, should not. So that just didn't, get should, didn't get updated. Yep. So I think we'll be able to, even with a couple of uh, additions to Monday, yeah. assuming they come in, we'll, we'll be able to get through all of them pretty quickly. We did them last time. All right, anything else or should we just go into recess? All right, we are in recess. Yeah.